One of the things that shocked me the most after my relocation was the outrageous cost of labor here in Canada. That's why the best way to save costs is to learn a valuable skill. This skill will not only help you save costs, but it will also bring in some extra income for you. I mean, who doesn't like extra cash? That's why in this video, I'll be sharing with you what I think are the top skills you need to learn if you'll be coming to Canada anytime in the future. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Toby and um, this will be the first video I'll be making as a Canadian citizen. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. Um, uh, if you follow me, uh, you know that a couple of weeks ago, myself and my wife, we became citizens of this great country. It's been a privilege and I plan to make a separate video on that, talking about our journey on moving from permanent residents to becoming citizens and what the changes are, what the pros and the cons are. That will be in a future video. If you're new to this channel, I welcome you. I make content like this talking about life here in Calgary and what I have experienced so far in my years of living here. If this kind of subject interests you, I'll ask that you please subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any of the videos I make. A huge thanks to those who liked my previous video where I talked about the cost of living here in Calgary. There were so many likes and comments on that video and I really appreciate it. If you haven't seen that video, I'm just going to drop a link to that video on the screen right now so you could watch it. Also, if there are any subjects or any topics you want me to talk about in the future videos, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you six valuable skills that I think you need to learn if you would be coming to Canada or relocating to anywhere in the Western world for that matter. While I don't expect that you know all six of these skills I'll be mentioning, even if it's just one of them you could learn, I believe it's going to bring value to you, to your family, and you could also make some money out of it. And in case no one has ever told you, in case you don't know, the cost of labor abroad is very, very high. And this is not peculiar to just Canada. Even in the US, in the UK, cost of labor is very high. And in most cases, you're better off buying a brand new product. You're better off replacing the product entirely than repairing it, calling someone to repair. For instance, you have a TV that stops working. In some cases, you're better off buying a new TV than taking it in for repairs because you'll be spending almost about the same amount for repairs as buying a brand new one. So I'm going to try to keep this video short. The first skill I'll be talking about will be hairdressing and barbing. This one is huge. I mean, people make ladies' hair here for as much as $450, and they can make guys' hair for ab about around $300. I remember when I was on dreadlocks, and um, it costed me about $300 to start the dreadlock, and every other month I had to maintain it for around $150. You know, you pay $150 every month, every two months. I could, I, there was no way I could maintain, I could keep up with that, so I, I just had to cut my hair. Like, I didn't have that kind of money. Right now, my wife helps me to make my hair. She makes my she makes my daughter's hair too, and she she's just a blessing to our family because of this skill that she has. So that's why I think like this is a very valuable skill. You would be able to you could you could also start to make people's hair and start to charge them for it. If you're a guy and you're low cut, barbers charge here around between twenty five dollars to fifty dollars to cut hair. So that's still fair because it's not like you're cutting your hair every week. But at the same time, like imagine if your partner knows how to cut hair then you're saving that amount of money every every time you go to the barber's shop. Knowing how to barb or knowing how to make hair is never going to be a waste for you. You would always find someone you could help. And if you're a business-minded person, you could start a business, make people's hair, create an Instagram page, tell people you make their hair. If you don't know how to barb, if you don't know how to make hair, and you know someone who knows how to do these things, you could start to talk to them to maybe teach you how to, you know, cut hair or make simple braids or something. You never know where you need it. The second skill I'll be talking about will be fashion designing, tailor, tailor skills. If you know how to make clothes, if you know how to mend clothes, I think this is going to be so valuable to you whenever you relocate. If you know how to repair zip, you know what I'm talking about, like zip of jeans, or you know how to make simple adjustments, you know, like some of us are not like very tall. Some of us are tall, but not very tall. 
when you buy jeans and the jeans is not is longer than you and you can't find out that is your exact size or the exact fitting and you just need a tailor that can just quickly do a, a, a quick slim fit you won't find and when you find it at the end of the day you would see that the amount they are charging is almost how much you bought that jeans for i remember buying some jeans and then i took to a lady i found on marketplace and then she was saying she was going to charge me 40 dollars to mend one jeans and then i was like hello nimura jeans how much did i buy the jeans so um yeah if you know how to make clothes if you know how to mend clothes i think this is going to become so valuable for you when you relocate because you're not going to i have myself and my wife we have so many clothes in our closet now that are very good but maybe just a ripped um zip or maybe just a little tear or something and then we can't wear them again so we're just keeping them maybe we're going to end up donating them to the donation center or something if we're in nigeria we would have called obioma sharp sharp 15 naira, 100 naira they would have repaired it there's no obioma here the only obioma you see here now like they will charge you big money big money and then so you're going to start wishing that you knew how to sew clothes you're going to, you're going to start wishing that you learned something like this before coming to canada also the fact that for me for instance all the natives i brought from nigeria about three years ago none of them are my size anymore i really wish i had like very good tailors here in town that could sew me proper native but like my best option now is to either buy from nigeria i run the risk of like paying more because i'm going to have to pay the tailor then i'm going to have to pay for shipping and then when it gets here there is a risk that it's not going to be exactly what i want maybe the the clothes is going to be fine but it's not going to be my exact size or it's going to be tight on the hips and free on the legs and stuff like that so we, we run that risk for some people it works fine you know because of business i do i have people come here they come here with clothes that they shipped from nigeria and maybe the clothes is good the cap is not their size or the top is good and the trouser is bad something something is always wrong that's because we don't have personally i don't even know any fashion designers like in town here someone who would make correct native correct ankara for you here if this is something that interests you and you plan on coming to canada in any, any time in the future i think you should give it a try start to learn from now pay someone to teach you and then take it seriously you never know where you'd find yourself and in what situation you find yourself where this is going to come in handy for you the third skill i'll be talking about will be mechanic or auto repairs I remember walking into the mechanic store one time and um, I just told them to do a check on my car because I, I wanted to find out if there were any potential problems or if there were any things that I needed to change and I came out with a bill of about $2,000. These were just recommendations like the mechanic guy told me, oh, you, you don't have to change these things but like in a few months time this could start to give you a problem, that could start to give you a problem so it is advised that you change it and this is what it is going to cost. Everything is going to cost you about $2,000. I left there, I never went back there. But what I'm trying to say now is this, like, I didn't even know all those things he listed, like shock absorber, Cali. I don't know how to check all those things, right? I don't know about cars. I, I don't know about car parts and, and all that. So that is why this is very, very valuable. Like knowing simple things like how to change the oil of your car, how to know the difference between like when the shock absorber is giving problems or when the some people say something is called arm and there's another one called them um, piston and all those all those parts around the tire and, and stuff knowing all these things are going to like become so valuable to you when you relocate because at the end of the day you'll be at the mercy of the mechanic whatever the mechanic here says is what you you would have to believe at the end of the day yes i'm not saying become a mechanic i'm saying have the knowledge know the parts know these things and um yeah so when people call these things for you it's not strange to the ears when they say oh like your wiper is bad some people don't even know what the wiper is you should know all the fluids in the car like the windshield washer the engine oil the brake fluid the transmission fluid you should know where all those things are and simple things like that will end up becoming valuable to you whenever you relocate right now it costs me about 150 dollars every time i go to do my servicing to change the oil and the filter of the car i know there are people in this city who who just do this servicing by themselves in their house and i just wish i could every time i'm going to save myself 150 dollars and the stress of driving to someone to help me change my oil so this, this is why i'm saying like if you learn these things then it's going to become useful for you sometime not just for yourself even maybe for your friends and then you could start a business even if you like the fourth skill i'll be talking about will be electrical and plumbing work if you plan to relocate in the future and you know any electricians or any plumbers or you have any in your family 
stick with them right now whatever knowledge you can get get from them you're going to need it you are going to need it some people can't even change the bulbs in the house when you show them screwdriver they call it spanner if you fall in that category start to watch youtube videos and learn about these things how to do how to fix simple things how to change the wall socket just these simple fixes in the house are going to save you a lot of money and for plumbing things like learning how to fix a wc learning how to use a plunger you know when the toilet is blocked how to unblock it. Simple things like this are going to be very, very useful to you. You have no idea. Plumbers charge a whole lot of money here in Calgary. They charge maybe around $100, $150 per hour. And it doesn't matter how much time they spend. Like even if they come to your house and spend five minutes, you're going to pay them that $150 and then they go. It's a lot of money. And at the end of the day, these things they are coming to check most times are things you can easily do by yourself or things you can just watch on YouTube and fix by yourself. So knowing these skills are going to save you if you plan to relocate. Trust me, trust me 100%. The fifth skill I'll be talking about will be carpentry and building skills. If you know how much I miss our Nigeria carpenters here, like Nigerian carpenters are just a blessing because like they can help you fabricate anything. You don't have to do any DIY. If you buy a furniture here, for instance, you buy a wardrobe or you buy a cabinet, there's a popular place called IKEA. IKEA. I think I heard they're in Lagos now, but there's a popular place called IKEA. So in IKEA, you go, when you buy furniture, you, you go, it's like a showroom. You go, you see the furniture you like. Then when you go to the um, purchasing place, you buy, and then they come in flat boards and then with screws and all the tools you need. So you're the one that is going to set it up. So when you see it in the showroom, it looks so beautiful, but the hard work is setting it up. So you're going to put it in the boot of your car, take it home, and then you're going to have to set it up from scratch. And if you're someone who has some building experience or maybe like some, like you have experience with tools and you, you are a handy person, maybe setting up something like a wardrobe is going to take you about three hours ish yeah there, there are times where we bought like drawers and we bought like um tables and we bought like my baby's crib all those things took a lot of time to set i think the crib was the hardest the crib was like really really hard it took about maybe five hours so if you're that kind of person who is a handy person it's going to take you less time but if you have no idea if you're someone who doesn't know the difference between the tools you don't know how to handle them then you you better off be paying someone to do this for you and on the average it's going to cost about a hundred dollars to pay someone to fix this up i think ikea has a service if you need someone to come to your house to help you set up i think they have that kind of service where you pay them and then they would um set it all up for you you don't have to stress yourself but that's money that could stay in your pocket also for building like if you have experience with building like i have a friend who's a civil engineer and he tells me all about building stuff um cantilever and stuff like if that kind of person comes here like he's going to be able to initiate so many projects on his own if he has his house he's going to be able to like build so many things without spending so much money for instance i have a neighbor here and um he was being charged thirteen thousand dollars just to do concrete around this house. That's, that's a huge, huge amount of money, huge. So if you have idea about building, building basic things like a step ladder, like a fence, like, you know, just basic knowledge about building, you're going to save a lot of costs because building here takes a lot of money. Just to build a fence, just one side of the fence, wooden fence, is about maybe like four thousand dollars so usually what happens is like if you have a neighbor on this side and you have a neighbor on this side you guys are going to share the cost of this one so rather than paying four thousand for this side and paying four thousand for this side you're going to pay two thousand for this side and two thousand for this side and your neighbor will pay the other two thousand so that's four thousand four thousand so that, that's how it works here if you have a home and then you need to build a fence but if you're going to build the fence by yourself with your neighbors you're not going to spend up to a thousand dollars like it's you're the one who's going to do the labor so what i'm trying to say is that labor is what takes the actual cost like the cost of materials are like low but the cost of labor is really high so if you have experience in carpentry or in building then you're going to save a lot of costs and it, this is a valuable skill to learn if you still have some time to learn and you plan to come to Canada in the future. And the last skill I'm going to talk about is going to be photography or cinematography. And if you know me, you know I am a photographer. I learned this back while I was in Nigeria. I've been doing this for a while. And coming here, this has just been a blessing for me and for my family. You know, I, I do it as a business and um, 
yeah i've been able to make some side income apart from my regular job and it's it's just been it's just been amazing and um i plan to make a separate video on this particular topic you know um setting up a, a business or having a side gig in canada and um how you can navigate that in terms of taxes and all that um i am going i'm definitely going to talk about it from the point of view of a photographer or cinematographer i do all kinds of shoots um studio events um, i do videos and then yeah sometimes i just look at myself like most of these things i know i learned on youtube while i have people in my life who taught me most of these things are things i learned by myself and i have seen firsthand people in this city who came into Canada without having any skills at all, any photography skills, and they learned everything here, and they're doing so well, doing better than me even. Like they're taking people's photos, giving good services, giving good value, and making a lot of money. You can do it too. So if you plan to come in the future and you're, you've been procrastinating about learning photography, learning how to make videos and stuff. Maybe maybe this is the time to start to learn. You you don't want to get here first, then start to learn. But it might get so it might get so busy, you know, you're trying to get a job, you're trying to settle down at the same time you're trying to learn a skill. So if you have some time in your hands now, you want to start to build some skill and start to improve yourself if you're already in the process. And then you never know, maybe when you come here it's going to become so so useful for you who knows the demand for photographers and cinematographers here in calgary especially is really really crazy especially in the summer months people want to take photos people want to do family events people want to celebrate their birthdays and stuff so the demand is always high sometimes you can't keep up sometimes you have three four gigs in a day other days you don't have anything but like overall it, the demand is crazy sometimes i just wish like i could bring all my friends i know i bring them into the city so they could you know yeah just render these services and make money so there you have it here are the six skills i wanted to talk about i think you need to learn if you will be coming to canada anytime in the future there are so many other skills you could learn i know that would also be valuable to you skills like maybe cooking learning how to clean there are people who like clean houses and clean cars there are people who cook i patronize people who cook a lot and then those guys make a lot of money too so there, there are other skills you could learn i just chose to focus on these six because i have seen firsthand that if you could learn at least one out of these six i talk about like you should be good if it's possible to learn more than one if it's possible to learn all six you'll be good i just want to say if you have the opportunity to learn something just learn it because no knowledge will be lost you never know where you would find yourself in my next video i plan to talk about how i got two jobs at the same time just two months after landing here in canada I'm sure you'll find this very interesting, especially if you be coming to Canada very soon. If you get value from any of these videos I make, especially today's video, I'd like to hear from you in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, share, turn on the notifications. I need this support, I need the encouragement to be able to make more videos and I would really appreciate it. Until I see you guys again in the next video. Thank you and peace out.